On Sunday, May the 27th, 2018, the UFC gives us the next offering for their beautiful violence inside of an eight-sided cage at UFC Fight Night 130 that a lot of people are poo-pooing on. But I'm here to tell you that it's not that bad and give you the top three fights that I think you should watch. Starting, of course, with number one. It is obvious, it's not always true, but for this fight card, the last one, and the next one, the main event is clearly the number one fight to watch without even a close second. Steven Wonderboy Thompson is stepping up to fight Darren the Gorilla Till in a battle of strikers. Both of these guys are really good counterfighters, but Steven Thompson, he's good at manipulating range, and he wants you to come to him so that he can counter you and get off with that crazy and sometimes fun karate style mostly with a lot of range keeping kicks. On the other side, we've got Darren Till, who's an aggressive counter striker, mostly with his hands. He's gonna move forward and counter you when you try to save yourself from being pressed up against the fence. Fun fact here is that both these guys have been in fight of the nights that have gone to draws, and the winner will likely place themselves as a number one contender for either the interim multiweight title or maybe even the real title, depending on how Rafael Dos Anjos versus Colby Covington shakes out, and then who, Tyron the Chosen One Woodley, the real champion, who he's going to fight next anyway. No matter who wins here, they're really close to getting a piece of that UFC gold. Number two, I think this one's pretty obvious as well. We've got Jason the Kid, or Hick Diaz, or Mississippi Mean, whatever you want to go with, Knight versus Maquan Mirkani. Mr. Finland, and that part of that dude's nickname comes from a little bit of truth. He got runner-up in a Mr. Finland competition, so he's not bad on the eyes. If you've got a girlfriend or if you yourself are into pretty men, you might want to watch him just for that. But he's also a really exciting fighter. The majority of his fights are via submission. He's won those sons of guns. Also, he made his UFC debut and won via flying knee and follow-up punches in just eight seconds against Andy Ogle. And then after that, against Masio Fulin, he finished that fight in just over a minute, just under two minutes in the very first round. He's a really exciting fighter. His last two have gone to the judges, and his last one wasn't that great, but I'm going to put that on his opponents. When he fights Jason the Kid Knight, who is a guy who's always going to be moving forward. He's always going to have some exciting action, and he might even jaw at his opponents a little bit. That's where he gets that Hick Diaz moniker. He can take a lot of punishment. He can move forward. He's got a very dynamic striking arsenal that he's very confident with, even though he's going to block a lot of punches with his face. He has the majority of his victories via submission, where his background is in BJJ, but he puts on really exciting fights. Him and Mir Khani are going to put on probably, in my estimation, the fight of the night. Number three, you might be a little bit surprised by this, but I'm looking forward to old man judo Dan Kelly versus Tom Breeze. Breeze trains with the guys at TriStar in Faraz Sahabi. He's got a really good corner behind him. He's an intelligent fighter. He's got a background in a little bit of grappling, but he made his UFC debut and he knocked out Luis Dutra in the first round. And then after that, he knocked out Cajal Pendred, who's a fan favorite in the first round as well. So even though in his last bout, he just showed a jab and move, kind of avoid a firefight type of offense in the striking department, he does have the ability to pack quite a wallop and he can put people down. He's a huge man. He was fighting at 170 pounds. He's moving up here to 185 pounds, which could spell disaster for Dan Kelly because at 170, Tom Breeze, he seemed to be a little bit slow, but facing these heavier opponents, his strikes could come at a higher clip in relation to his opponents, relatively. And with that background in grappling, he could ward off the judo of Dan Kelly. We haven't seen him fight in two years. He could have a little bit of ring rust. But like I said, with Faraz Sahabi in his back pocket, maybe he's developed and achieved a lot of growth in those two years. And we can see a really, really improved Tom Breeze. The man is only 26 years old, which means the last time we saw him, he was likely 24 years old. So wow, I expect a lot of big things from Tom Breeze. He could knock out judo Dan early, or we could see Dan Kelly put one of these youngsters away again like we've seen in a lot of fights. He beat Sugar Rashad Evans via decision. He's got a surprisingly fast left hand. He's obviously got great takedown defense and really good judo tosses. He survived on the ground with Carlos Jr. shoe face. I cannot believe that he was able to do that and he got that victory against Antonio Carlos Jr. Wow, really surprising. One of two things gonna happen here. 
Tom Brees starches the old man in judo, Dan, or we get to see a super old guy ward off a young up and comer. Either result, I'm excited to watch, and that's my top three, you guys. What I want from you is to tell me what your top three is in the comment section down below. Thumb the video up, and I'll see you on my next one. Namaste. Mm -hmm.